Harry, who never ever did his homework. Harry hated homework. He did everything he could to avoid doing it. The boy had a long list of excuses he would recite to teachers, explaining why he couldn't hand it in. My goldfish ate it. My mum ate it. She'd been on a diet and was extremely peckish. The house was robbed by a gang of burglars, and the first thing they took was my geography exercise book. There's a big criminal black market in the geography homework. My homework was deemed so superb that it went straight to the British Library, where it would be kept under glass for future generations. I left it on the back seat of my dad's car, but unfortunately a hippopotamus escaped from the zoo and sat on the car, destroying everything inside. My little sister is an origami master and used the pages of my exercise book to make a huge paper recreation of ancient Tokyo. It was put in a rocket and blasted into space by NASA scientists, attempting to seek contact with aliens to show there was intelligent life on Earth. We were all out of loo paper. We were all out of loo paper, so my Aunt Rose used it to wipe her bottom. It was struck by a bolt of lightning and it burst into a ball of flames. Secret service agents confiscated it as they said... Secret service agents... Secret service agents confiscated it as they said it contained a top secret algebra equation. Because Harry never ever did his homework, he had time to do all the fun things he wanted to do after school, like play on his games console for hours and hours and... Actually, that's it. Playing computer games was all the boy liked to doing. If he had his way, he would play computer games all day and all night, his thumbs working the controller. The boy would laugh to himself <laughs> as he thought about all his classmates having to do their homework while he drove racing cars through the streets of Monte Carlo or flew through the space shooting lasers or scoring the winning goal in the World Cup. The boy had not handed in his homework for so many years that his teachers had given up on him. However, one day, a new teacher arrived at the school a mysterious old history teacher called Madame Magna. The lady was dressed from head to toe in black, with a lace scarf covering her head, which all but obscured her eyes. Madame Magna smelled like an old musty book that you might find in a jumble sale, and she spoke with a thick foreign accent that nobody could quite place. Rumours about the old lady swirled around the school. On her arrival, some children thought she might be a witch, Others thought she was a time traveller who had actually lived through all these moments in history that she taught. Guesses about her age ranged from 70 to 700. Even the other teachers kept their distance from her. At lunchtime, Madame Magna sat alone under a tree smoking a long pipe. The plumes of smoke would float in the air and swirl into the shapes of people or animals. Madame Magna turned pipe smoking into an art. Our story begins on the day Harry had his first lesson with the new teacher. Madame Magna was teaching the children about the various methods of medieval torture, and as the bell rang, Harry was the first to leap up out of his chair to go. Homework in first thing tomorrow, announced Madame Magna. Harry, would you stay behind, please? Harry let out a huge sigh. Oh, what now, miss? Madame. What now, madame? It has come to my attention that you never once handed in your homework. Well, miss, I mean, madame, began Harry. He was very experienced at giving teachers the brush off with some ridiculous excuse, so he was not too worried. And that it's strange, because I did it all. Maybe just the words fell off the pages of my exercise book. Madame Magna took out her pipe and stuffed the end with tobacco. Slowly, she lit it with a match and blew a huge cloud of foul-smelling smoke into the boy's face. Harry coughed and spluttered as the smoke swirled around him. The boy was sure he could see shapes of knights in armour on horseback jousting in the smoke. However, no sooner has he seen the vision than it was gone. Well, well, well. Harry, you are quite the joker. But if you don't do your homework tonight, Maybe you will be visited by apparition in the dead of night. The boy was unnerved by this. What do you mean, Miss... Uh, madame? You will see for yourself. You 
as the master of your destiny. Can I go now, Miss Madame? Yes. The old lady took another long drag on her pipe and blew a huge, thick cloud of smoke right in the direction of the boy. This time he was sure he could see camels and slaves in their pyramids of ancient Egypt. He coughed and spluttered again, and when the smoke was cleared, she was gone. Harry was seriously spooked. What did the mysterious madame mean by apparitions in the dead of night? The boy ran all the way home, and as soon as he was in his bedroom, he rummaged in his school bag for his history exercise book. It was all but empty of work. Harry had been doodling instead of making notes for most of the term. The history homework, or homework, that Madame Magna had set in the evening was an essay. Who is the greatest villain in the history of the world? Harry realised the teacher meant world. The boy pondered the question for a while. The problem was he hadn't listened to a word, or even a bird, as she said in class, so Harry hadn't had the faintest idea who to write about. The boy knew that Darth Vader was a villain, but was pretty sure that he had been made up rather than being a figure from the world history. Harry scratched his head, then he chewed his pen, then he picked his nose. He did lots of things other than his homework, and in no time he had discarded his history book and was back playing games. Saving the galaxy or destroying the galaxy or some such nonsense. When Harry finally went to bed, he'd forgotten all about his history homework and the teacher's strange premonition. And after hours of playing computer games, the boy was tired and went straight to sleep. A deathly chill passed through the room in the middle of the night. It woke Harry up. Opening his eyes, he saw that a huge cloud of silky grey smoke had filled the room. The smoke was a swirling and twirling into shapes, and finally settled into creating five terrifying figures, all in historical clothing. Who are you? demanded the boy. We are the greatest villains in history, said one in a suit of armour, carrying a mighty sword. I, of course, need no introduction. I am Attila the Hun. I've never heard of you, mate, replied Harry. Well, you should have done, replied Attila. He was not at all pleased this boy had no idea who he was. I was the most feared ruler in Europe and waged a war on everyone. I'll take your word for it murmured Harry. He then turned to the next figure. Who are you? I, boy, need no introduction, the man said as he swirled his cape. Yes, you do, replied Harry. I've never seen you before in my life. Does Vlad the Impaler mean nothing to you? No. Well, 500 years ago, I impaled everyone in sight. Good for you. Next. I am surely the worst villain in all history, said a theatrical man with a white robe and a crown of gold leaves on top of his head. So what's your name? Caligula. I was an emperor of the Roman Empire. But more than that, a god. Oh, here he goes again, muttered Attila. Let me introduce Myself, child, as you clearly are something of an ignoramus. I am Robe Pierre, leader of the French Revolution. I executed thousands of people, including some of my closest friends. Why did you do that? asked Harry. If you didn't like them, then why just not... Just don't text them back. After a while, they've, they've got the message. This was the 1790s. We didn't have mobile phones then, you buffalo. Ah, 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 came a voice. Sitting in the corner of Harry's bedroom was a heavy-looking man with a long grey beard. You all are nobodies compared to me. Who are you? asked Harry. I know you jest with me, child. I am Genghis Khan, ruler of the Mongol Empire. As I swept across the world, my army killed millions of people. Who cares about a few less Frenchies, pa? With that, Genghis Khan spat on the floor. 
Robespierre was fuming. How dare you? Some spit landed on my tights. Wipe it off at once. I will not, replied Genghis. <laughs> Cooed Caligua, mocking them. Come on now, girls. Let's not fall out. Shut up, ordered Harry. The world's worst villains were stunned into silence. No one had ever told them to shut up before. Now can you please tell me what you're all doing here in my bedroom? I'd rather you didn't kill me, if you don't mind, because I've just got to level 8 on my game. Kill ye! Kill ye! said Vlad. As if we would do such a thing, added Genghis. So what are you going to do? demanded Harry. We are going to make you do your homework, announced Robespierre. Oh no, replied the boy. Oh yeah, said Attila. It's not fair, said Harry. All night the villain stood over the boy as he was forced to do his history homework. Just as Harry would write a sentence, a violent argument would break out between the villains. But, 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 but you can't begin a sentence with but, Robespierre bawled. You just did, Vlad the Impaler replied before impaling the leader of the French Revolution. Slowly but surely, the essay began to take shape. The villains were more than happy to give the boy the facts and figures he needed, as they boasted about their awful achievements. The guillotine was a very effective way of putting all French nobility to death, Robespierre bragged. How oh, mind-dumbingly dull, Caligula replied. In ancient Rome, I threw people into the arena where they would be eaten alive by bears and lions. Much more fun. So as not to cause any more violent arguments, Harry didn't choose anyone as the absolute worst villain of all time. Instead, he wrote, In conclusion, Vlad, Caligula, Genghis, Robespierre and Attila were all as bad as each other. The villains seemed happy with that and murmured in agreement. I still think I was the worst, uttered the ruler of the Mongol Empire. Shut up, Genghis, said Harry. As the sun rose in the morning, history had been made. Harry had completed his first ever piece of homework. I hope you get top marks, Harry, said Vlad. And bon chance for your exam, added Robespierre. Harry looked at the Frenchman blankly. It means good luck, added the leader of the French Revolution. Thank you. I'll try. Maybe you try to do your French homework from now on too. Yes, all right, replied the boy in a strop. You do too much playing on the computer games thing, declared Genghis. I know, agreed Harry. Promise me you will cut down the hours on it, said Caligula. I promise, replied the boy. Our work here is done, gentlemen, and of course, Vlad, said Robespierre. Adieu! Just as the villains had appeared in a cloud of smoke, they disappeared in one too. Despite all their craziness, Harry was going to miss having them around. Although he'd had a sleepless night, the boy skipped to school in the morning and couldn't wait to hand in his homework to his history teacher. Madame Magna read it eagerly and was mightily impressed. This is wonderful! Absolutely wonderful! She exclaimed as she puffed on her pipe. Thanks, miss. I mean, madame. Is this all your own work? Or did anyone help you with it? I had a tiny bit of help. Yes, I know, boy, replied Madame Magna before blowing a huge plume of smoke into the classroom. It took the shape of the five most evil villains in history. Vlad, Caligula, Genghis, Robespierre, and Attila. They all smiled at Harry. Just as Madame Magna hobbled off down the corridor, the boy called after her. But just so you know, this whole homework thing is, is very much a one-off. The lady stopped and turned back to face Harry. Is that so? She replied. Yes, I, I won't be doing it again. What a shame. And I know you would so enjoy tonight's homework. It's all about our old friend Boudicca, the ancient British queen 
who led the revolt against the Romans. Gosh, that sounds so boring. Well, let's hope she doesn't make a little visit tonight in her chariot. Madame Magna smiled and puffed on her pipe. The corridor was filled with a thick black smoke. It twirled into the shape of a queen, riding a chariot pulled by her two powerful horses. The wheels on the chariot had razor blades, sharp, that could chop your legs off in a heartbeat. The chariot was travelling at an enormous speed, and the blades were coming right towards Harry. Death to Romans! shouted Bodica. The boy was trembling with fear. All right, all right, I'll do it! What the good boy? replied Madame Magna. The lady inhaled on her pipe, and Queen Bodica vanished. Harry watched as his teacher made her way down the corridor. With every step, she became fainter and fainter, until Madame Magna melted into the air, into thin air. The teacher disappeared as mysteriously as she had appeared. From that day on, Harry always did his homework. He never wanted to see that terrifying teacher again.